It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. It appears as though that Matt Walsh has decided to comment about the whole entire Sweet Baby Incorporated controversy. And so without further hesitation, let's react to what he had to say about this particular issue. So what this means is that the video game industry, without a lot of fanfare, has transformed into a tool of both propaganda and surveillance. It's an effective way to indoctrinate children precisely because it hasn't received much attention and also because children spend, many of them, hundreds of hours a year, and that might be an undercount, a severe undercount, uh, 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 with this kind of content. First and foremost, the only thing that I actually agree about Matt Walsh is the whole entire issue about Sweet Baby Incorporated and how many companies are using their own personal political belief as a main narrative for many of their games. But I don't necessarily think that anybody who are in favor of asking for like, you know, a conversation about this issue to use Matt Walsh as an ally. Now, first and foremost, one main issue that I have is the fact that he suggests that video games are for little children it says right here, according to the Peer Research Center, that younger men play video games, but also so do a diverse group of other Americans. Basically, when it comes down to people playing video games, men play it often about 24%, and about 23% say sometimes. Now, for the case of women, about 19% play it often, and about 21% sometimes play it. Now, when it comes down to races, there are, of course, 21% of white males often play it, while 20% of white males sometimes play it. Now, for the case of black people, about 24% of black people play it, compared to 20% of black people who don't play it. Now, when it comes down to Hispanic, about 18% play it, in comparison to 29% that sometimes play it. Now, when it comes down to the age demographics, about 29% of 18-year-olds to 29-year-olds play video games in comparison to 31% of those who don't play video games. Now, when it comes down to 20 to about 30 to 49, about 28% play it in comparison to 25 who sometimes play it. Now, for those who are 50 to 60-year-olds, about 15% play it often in comparison to 70% that don't play it often. And finally, when it comes down to 65 plus, about 11% play it often in comparison to 13% that play it often. So video games are actually a tool, an artistic expression that appeals to anybody, no matter their age, race, or background. Now, when it comes down to ratings, there are different classifications when it comes down to it. For the most part in America, we use something that is known as the ESRB for our rating systems. And it says right here, of course, the ratings right here about E refers to those about like, you know, anybody, no matter their age range. There's also E10 for everybody 10 and up. There is like T for teenagers and M for mature. So this idea that only video games appeal to children, as suggested by Matt Walsh, is not necessarily, you know, helpful in the slightest. And this is not the first time ever he does this ever when it comes down to this whole entire issue about video games. For example, he has a video right here <laughs> that basically says that violent video games are bad for kids. And so let's look, to, look at the video clip and see what he had to say. For some reason, my Twitter mentions became filled with people upset over something that I tweeted on March 8th, 2018. And here's the offending tweet. Video games are a sacred cow because our country is filled with adults who are obsessed with them. That's why we all pretend insanely that there's nothing wrong with or disturbing about a child spending all day killing people in a virtual world. Now, first and foremost, there are plenty and plenty and plenty of studies that demonstrate that there is no correlation between violence in the real world and people playing video games. Now, according to the studies, there might be some acts of aggression, 
But the main reason why there are acts of aggression is largely because sometimes the person plays a boss battle and sometimes the boss battle or the enemy that the person is playing against is largely hard. And sometimes in that heat of moment, you get a little bit frustrated. But outside of that, there's no such direct correlation between people playing violent video games and doing violent things in real life. But another thing, it's all about moderation. Obviously, the parent needs a parent. And so sometimes doing things in moderation doesn't necessarily hurt anybody. So this kind of tweet he just did doesn't make any sort of sense. In conclusion, Matt Walsh is not an ally for video games. The only thing that came good out of all this whole entire stuff about him talking about Sweet Baby is that more people will get the full story in comparison to Wikipedia. But at the same time, we need to remember, he doesn't like video games either. He's been attacking video games for like a long period of time now. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.